Hello everybody, hope you are well. Um, today we're going to go over um, the portrait. So I hope you guys are excited for that. The one thing that I definitely want to do is I want to say thank you to uh, my viewers and also my subscribers um, for at least watching my videos and I hope that some of these tutorials definitely does help you. Um, as you can see right now I'm trying to adjust uh, my paper just a bit in the frame. <clears throat> So, um, with today, I don't want to talk too much. I really just want to spend a lot of time just um, talking about this um, assignment. This assignment is actually for my TCU Drawing 1 students, and they're going to be doing a portrait or self-portrait or a portrait of somebody else from a photo reference. Uh, so, I'm going to get started on how to at least start the project. So, the one thing that I definitely want um, my students to know is that you want to make sure you print out your photo which is here um, and you can print it out in black and white or you can print it out in color I have it in black and white for right now uh, because I really just want to focus on getting the linear structure down and that's pretty much what this video is about it's just getting the drawing started getting um, the structure or at least some of the structure of the drawing down um, that way uh, we can definitely uh, start with light and shade and value. So it's kind of going to be a part one, part two video, maybe a part three if need be. Um, so today I do want to talk a little bit about my materials. I do have regular drawing paper, which is, um, I think a Stonehenge paper, which is a little bit of lavish paper, you guys. Lavish, woohoo, yay, lavish. Um, but, um... We have a little bit of that uh, regular drawing paper that you guys have will work totally fine. I just decided I would use something that's a little bit more uppity with quality as well as I have my printout. The one thing that I definitely want you guys to do is you want to make sure that your printout, which is here, as well as your paper is at least level to one another or close to level to one another because we're going to be utilizing direct transferring onto this paper. So another thing with my materials that I do have as well is I have my trusty plastic eraser I have my um, mechanical erasers uh, the big and small size as well as my Tombow pencil that I've gotten very fascinated about um, and kind of like so I really like the fact that they're really gray as well as my trusty skewer yay the skewer um, this will help me get proportions if I need to transfer anything over so I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, so the one thing that I do want to make sure that I have and also my students what I want you to make sure you have is a ruler so I have my gridded ruler that is here um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start with for me I want to at least get the bottom of my chin and also the top of my I would say head if you have a head but for me because I have a head wrap in the actual photo I need to get the top of my knot on my head wrap in so that way we can get that placed so I'm making sure that my grid is a little bit level to my tape and I want to get in just draw over and transfer over and it might be fairly lightly you might see it kind of light and I might have to draw just a little bit darker than I normally do but um, that way you guys can see it so I transferred over my chin I want to transfer over the top of my um, knot that's on my scarf that's just a quick transfer <clears throat> so now that I have that and hopefully you guys can see I do have a line that's down here and a line that's at the top so this is my chin area I also want to draw over another line that's here um where my knot ends just transferring it over as well as i want to transfer over an idea for where uh, my scarf begins on my head so just to make another note of that and normally you want to draw your lines light i'm kind of coming in a little bit heavy on my lines but i can always erase them a little bit later so now that I got that in, um, I have an idea of where my chin is, and I also have an idea for um, where the top of my knot is. So another thing that I definitely want to do is, and I can either measure this with my skewer, um, but I kind of want to get an idea for how far out <clears throat> 
and I don't know if I want to do it this way, but I can kind of measure and get an idea for how far out uh, the, the side of my uh, jaw is. And I might bring it out just a little bit more. I'm just gonna bring it out just a little bit more. I think that idea of where it is. So now that I kind of have that, um, and that's just giving me a quick little idea and making a note for it, and that's all I need. I just need to make a note. Same thing on this side. I just want to get kind of how far or where I think my chin may start, just to give me an idea. Double check the measurement. And things are going to shift and change. Right now, I'm just trying to get an idea of where things are at. So now that I kind of have that in, let me get an eraser. And I'm just kind of getting some areas in. Now I can kind of start with, uh, which I want to start with, is where the chin actually is. So I'm just going to place the chin in this area. And I'm also going to get an idea for the direction of uh, my face because my face is kind of slanted just a bit. And this definitely is going to change. Another thing that I'm going to start with is I want to get my cranium in lightly. So as you can see guys, I'm just dragging dragging uh, my pencil for that sphere to get in there so I kind of have an idea for my cranium that's there so once I have that I do know that this line here is where um, the ball of my hip wrap is so right now because we're so much in the early stages I just want to get it placed I'm not gonna worry about the drawing, keep it very linear. It's kind of an early gesture stage for right now. I just wanna get that place. And I also have the top of uh, my uh, scarf, where it is, on my face. And right now, I'm gonna have to bring it down just a little bit. And it's going to get adjusted as well. So it's okay if you have a lot of lines happening. Um, once again, uh, that's kind of how drawn is. You start with just lines, a bunch of lines everywhere, whether they're right or wrong, but they're there. So now I have that, and I just want to erase off some of this. <clears throat> I kind of got an idea so far uh, for where things start. So I'm going to get just another idea. I'm just going to block out the side of my scarf really fast once again this is liable to change as the drawing develops I'm gonna get a little bit of a placement for my ear for right now and we can always measure where I think my ear is and draw a line for that so I know this is where my scarf is in my ear about right here. So that kind of gives me an idea for that. And if I want to come down and get another measurement for the ear, I definitely can do that. And I was kind of in the right spot where I was guessing. A very, very small ear. So I have that. I also want to come in get an idea of the relationship of where my scarf is, where my ear is. So as of right now, I got an idea for my scarf and my jawline, which once again, it's going to change. I want to get my neck in. I think of necks more so as a cylinder that kind of wraps around I know that my chin is there and I kind of want to lighten this up just a little bit I 
um, I know although I don't have my lips in I see that the trapezium muscle is about right here for right now that may change that may change just right now I'm just trying to get it get an idea of it in the same thing for that side and I kind of want to get a shape in I could do this if I want to be extremely accurate make sure that lines up with what I'm actually saying. That way I don't elongate it. So which I would do I'm starting to elongate it just a bit. I'm gonna lighten this line. Going in too dark with that. You want to keep your drawing, I'm drawing a lot darker than what I should, but you want to keep your drawing as wide as possible. Definitely that way these lines are not competing when we start to go into um, light logic. So I'm erasing out some, and I start over here as well, and up here. I really don't need those lines at this moment. And a little bit up here. As of right now, I kind of got an idea down. That's all I need. Alright, so now that I kind of got the shape for uh, my head in, uh, and also the shape for um, my trapezium muscles on my shoulders, I can kind of bring out a quick um, layout for where I think my shoulders are at. I got that right now. So I have somewhat of a start of what I'm going to be doing. Um, my face might be a little bit wider than what it is here. Um, like I said, things are going to change and move around uh, once I start to get the features and things in. So the good thing about having a photo that's already printed out, I can come in and draw on it. So I'm just trying to get a quick center line if need be. Um, so I kind of know at least where my center line is going to be on my face. I also want to make sure that things are angling the way that I want it to be angling. So I can kind of bring that in. Erase that little line just a bit. <clears throat> Which allows my face to get a little bit more um, close to what I'm seeing it just for right now. So now that I have that, um, I want to think about um, the spacing, just relationship. I see somewhat of a shape that's there um, for the, my wrap. I want to think of where that center line is and look at for that shape, which is the shape that's here. So I can get that a little bit closer uh, to what I'm seeing for my reference. So as you can see, my center line is going to start very generic. Um, but this center line is going to move. It's going to move a lot. Um, I also want to get just a better idea from spacing from the top of my knot to the bottom of my knot. And I think it is about right here. So but once again, this is going to move eventually. I just want to lightly get in and have an idea for it. <clears throat> So now I have that. Um, normally you wanna break down the face into three parts, um, but because of my head wrap, um, I'm gonna have to start with where my, my knot is, um, and probably I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit just to make sure I got three parts. <clears throat> so I'm gonna say this is my hairline. brow my brow my brow is definitely going to change and my nose also uh, my chin which I already kind of got my chin and lined up so I have uh, let me draw that line out just a little bit more for you guys to see. So I have my hairline, I have my brow ridge, my nose, 
and uh, my chin. So one, two, three, and of course my hairline is here. So I have that down. Um, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to get my brow ridge in, but if you notice, my brow ridge is slanted. So I want to make sure I get in that same slant. So my brow ridge is going to change. That means a lot of things are going to change because of it. So what I'm doing is just making sure my angles are right. So once again, guys, I have a hard time with angles, which you guys all know. So I know that my brow ridge is doing something like that, but it's actually just wrapping around. That's pretty much what's happening. So once I have that, I also know that my nose should be going in the same direction as my brow. So it's going to be a little bit slanted as well. Once again, that's wrapping around. Um, my, I'm going to get a little bit of crease from my mouth, but that's also going to be slanted. So what's happening? All these features need to happen all at the same time. And I'm probably going to change that and double check it, but you got an idea. So I always start with my keystone shape, which is this shape in the center that's here. So I'm going to start with that. I also want to pay attention to where my center line is for it. And I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And what I'm seeing also on this side. I'm going to make sure my angles are right. I'm going to erase out some of these wobbly lines I got going. Just a little bit. So now that I have that in, um, I want to get uh, the top of my nose. Uh, so now I have my key shown shape in. I want to get the top of my nose in. So normally the top of your nose come out a little bit at the keystone shape. So my, my keystone shape tends to come in just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to bring it down because I want to follow some of my eye socket just a bit to bring it down. I want to make sure my angles are right. I'm still paying attention to that center line where I have it. And I'm going to kind of get in a little bit of that arch that I'm seeing. So the top of my nose kicks out just a bit. And what I could do, because right now just get the width a little bit of the width of that nose. But I still want to get the top of my nose in. And I also want to think about where the ball of my nose is. So this is the shapes that I'm drawing. I drew this first. Got a little bit of the bottom already. And now I'm trying to draw in this shape that's here. Then I want to get in the ball of my nose. So I'm going to lightly draw a ball. I do want to pay attention to where it is, but I just want it there. Now that I have that, this is already kind of giving me an idea for like a front, a top, and a side. But I want to get in my baseline. So I know that this part of my nose, which is my wing of my nose, I want it to come in. I also want to think about the spacing that's here. So I have that. I want to get a little bit of that baseline in. And that baseline is slanted just a bit. So see, what I'm going to use is a little bit of shadow. I want to get this kind of slant that's there for the other shape of my nose.
and I'm okay if I come out of this box just a bit. And if I need to come down, I can definitely do that too. So it's giving me a little bit of a um, top, a little bit of a side, a toppening of that nose. So now that I have um, my baseline kind of in for right now, I'm going to leave this here at this shape for this moment because I want to kind of come in and I want to get in uh, my eye sockets. So remember starting with that keystone shape, what comes out of it is the nose and also the eye socket. I want to make sure I'm getting my angles right. And I want to get this in. I want to make sure that I'm thinking about my spacing. In relationships with things. So I know that my eye socket is very close to where my nose is. There's a little bit of a shape in between for that shadow. It's happening on one side, I need to happen on the other. So I'm just gonna draw a line over just to make sure I'm not drawing this socket too big. So also with this uh, keystone shape, I'm gonna draw it in just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna kinda come over because what I'm doing is I'm following the shape of my eye socket. Um, and also, I can kind of get an idea of that um, tear duct. So, uh, now I'm just trying to get um, an idea for uh, my eye socket that's on this side. I want to make sure I have more than enough space to do it. So I'm looking for this whole shape that I see here. So I have this here. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more. So I'm going to stay within that line that I just drew. So I'm going to erase out just a little bit. And I also know that this shape kind of dips down just a bit. Make sure it is kind of dip down a little bit more. So now that I kind of got that in, because I'm getting this overall shape in, I still want to make sure that my lid and this lid are um, are at the same uh, level. So, I'm gonna get this shape in. Make sure that's right. Alright, guys, so now that I kind of got my socket in, I also want to come in and get the width of my eye. My trusty skewer again. So I'm, right now I'm just going to draw a slit, saying okay this is where my eye is, on this side, so I'm saying this is where my eye is for right now, so I'm just getting placement right now. So now that I have that in um, and I have a little bit of an idea of what my nose is, um, I do want to think about my spacing in between. So if you look at this space and I kind of feel like my space is a little bit, um, a little bit wide than what I'm seeing. So 
So I'm getting this shape that's here. I'm trying to get an idea for that. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring in a rhythm line from here all the way down. So from my ear. down to my chin I'm trying to get an, an idea for the side of my face once I have that in I know there's a little bit of a rhythm line I'm in the scene and I can kind of get the side of my face in just a bit I'm also going to use a little bit of that shadow that shadow from my ball See how off I am on my angles. <laughs> and that gives me a little bit of an idea of the side of my face as well. So I'm keeping it very generic before I get to anything that's specific. Um, another thing I kind of can get in for another idea, I'm just going to get this cat shadow in. Which will help me with a little bit of a spacing for my mouth. So I brought down a plumb line onto my actual drawing. Just wanted to see how far that goes over. And I'm looking at the space in between my mouth. I think I'm at the right space for my mouth. And I think I can get an idea for the bottom of my mouth, which I might. So I got an idea for where the bottom of my mouth is going to be. I'm just trying to make sure they're lining up all the same. My brow ridge, my eyes, my nose, my mouth all needs to kind of go in the same direction. I need to bring this eye up. Back. And that is why we keep it very generic at the beginning. <laughs> From general to specific, so you can get things in the right spot. So now that I have that in, I'm just going to move a little bit to the side of my face. Um, I do have my stock in, so I kind of got an idea for how that goes in. Now I want to get my cheekbone in. I'm just going to block it in. So it's going to get modified um, as I go. So I'm not going to worry about um, all of these lumps and bumps, the muscles of the cheekbones and uh, or the muscles of the cheek or the cheekbone. Uh, the muscle that's around my mouth I'm not gonna worry too much about that right now I just want to get things in areas that needs to be in areas so now that I have that um, I also want to get in another plumb line if I can and look at my spacing so I can get an idea for where I think my crease of my mouth is kind of following on uh, that plumb line then I can find the other one so the straight down plumb line about the middle of my eye just trying to let this one is about right here as well so as you can see you guys I'm pointing my corners up to my ear up to my ear I'm gonna make sure you're getting that together so now that I have that, then I'm going to get just a simple shape in for my lips for right now. I'm going to 
crease. I know that I have um, the filter that comes out from the nose. So I'm just going to kind of get it in. Then I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to erase a little bit of lines. I have a lot of lines here, which I'm fine with for right now. And then I want to get the dip or the heart shape, which most people say it is, um, for the lip that's in this area. Make sure it's falling on that center line. And I'm gonna come back to my center line because I wanna. I know I was talking to my students about this, how the center line moves. Another thing I kind of want to get in just because I'm seeing it is a little bit of that cat shadow. And it'll also help me with, um, with figuring out the width that I'm seeing with uh, this cat shadow and also the shadow of the bottom of the lip. I'm also looking for spacing so as I can see um, either I need to make my lip bigger which I don't think I do and bring this down a little bit of that kind of shadow so there are some things that I do want to get in because I do feel like that needs to be a little bit closer but I'm feeling that it's close enough. I want to get the ball of my chin in. So I'm just dragging it for right now. So I did go a little bit lower but um, I do want to make sure that I'm getting that ball in. I just noticed I didn't get the rest of my lip in. <laughs> Alright, so now that I kind of got the ball on my chin, one thing that I want to do, I want to revisit really, really fast is this um, central line. So, our um, keystone shape is a downward plane, and then we have our forehead, which is an upward plane. Uh, and then also we have our um, top of our nose and then we want to wrap around the ball of the nose then I want to come down to my filter filter uh, and I want to come back down top of my lip come out come down uh, then come back around that ball of that chin. So now that I have that in, I'm gonna get my chin a little bit more developed. And kind of develop my jaw just a bit. A very dark jaw right now. <laughs> So as of right now, you guys, I have a good, pretty good block in that's pretty close to what I'm seeing. Um, so what I kind of want to do is just make sure that my trapezium muscles is in the right spot, which I think I need to pull it up just a little bit. I'm seeing it more in this area. Yeah, for our out it goes. Right, right there. Raise that out. And I can see how the diagonal works. Get 
getting my angles right, you guys. And I'm gonna bring it down just a bit more. Double check this side. I feel like my neck can come in just a little bit more than what I have it. Once again, your drawing is gonna change constantly. Allow it, allow the change for the better. Go ahead and erase it for right now. Come in and erase this just a little bit. Do not move on just a bit. But yeah, just in case you're, you're like, what are you doing? Um, this is a drafting brush, so this allows me to at least brush off any of the leftover um, uh, threads from the eraser. That way I don't have to smear um, my drawing. So it definitely helps with that. So as of right now, as you guys can see, I have in somewhat of an early gesture stage. Um, and I still have a lot of linear structure that I have to, um, to do. Uh, but the one thing that I do want to get in is, uh, a little bit of an idea of where my wrap starts. And I probably will switch over soon in this drawing to possibly utilizing a computer that way I can get a better idea of what's happening. Because the photo only gives me so much information. So now that I have that in, I'm just going to come in and draw in. My eyeballs. <laughs> so I'm dragging my pencil once again. Let's get my eyeballs in. And I can come in, get some angle down for for my uh, my ear just a little bit. Some of these lines are gonna start to disappear sooner or later. But I just want to get this drawing down. Just getting it down, that's all I'm trying to do. Alright, and uh, I'm going to start with just a little bit of the eye structure. Getting in uh, more of of the socket that I'm seeing, or at least that shadow that I'm seeing. Now that I have a shadow in, I'm gonna come in with that space. 
before I get to my tear duct. Yeah, this a little bit of the lid that's here and it's gonna lightly dry on it. And then I wanna see this tear duct that's here. I wanna make sure these shapes are right and right now. I'm not seeing them right. and I can always adjust my shadow shapes. So that top lid wraps around a little eye pile that I just drew. Then I'm gonna get the bottom of the lid. Which wraps around. So wraps around. Top of my lid, I do feel a little bit of. I'm looking at the space where my eyes things are going to change in this area, but I want to get it down. I also want to get bottom of my lid. So I kind of have placement of that and where it is. I'm happy with that. Make sure there's shadows in the right spot. So it's happening on one side, I need it to happen on the other. Eraser for her to use the majority of the time. I just want to lighten it. Tap on one side and tap to the other. So make sure I these lines with this tear duct in. You know what I'm saying? My tear duct starts right here. in between the nose. I never also want this to
down. You don't want to make your eyes too big, which young artists at this beginning tend to make their eyes way too big, especially the artists. The artists, a lot of people tend to make it bigger than what it really is, you don't want to do that. So I always pay attention to where um, the white of my eye is, that, that actual shape I'm seeing, and then also the actual shape of uh, my iris and also the my tear duct shape. So there's a lot of shapes I'm looking at all at the same time. Great line segments once again. They will begin. Uh, definitely will begin to uh, start to curve out a lot later. much about uh, my jawbone structure and what's happening with that.
say I'm getting quiet and really trying to pay attention and get some a good land. So I'm really concentrating. <laughs> see a little bit of my sideburns that kind of come out. shape as of right now. Alright, alright, so so far, once again, it's not 100% accurate to start with, um, but I got things where it needs to be, and that's what I'm happy about. Um, Another shape here that I didn't get in. So I want to get in really fast before I end the segment. Make sure I have enough space in this area. changing, I'm allowing it because I just want to make sure you right before I even start any type of light shade. I still need more linear structure.
random na storage in class. So, yeah. so you guys, if you see so many of my clothes in the car, like, do I have to draw that in? It's up to you. Sometimes I like to kind of try to get them in if I see them. So I'm still working on linear structure. Um, I haven't really gotten to a part where I feel confident. Um, separate light part and dark parts. I still want to work on my structure and get it to where it needs to be. But I have an idea of a layout that's right now. I'm um, going to go ahead and erase some of these notes that I have in the corner that's here. So the one thing that you want to do, and I can't stress enough you guys, is make sure when you draw the eye, you're not drawing um, a shape that um, that looks like this or like that, that kind of almond shape or a nose that looks like this, or a nose or a nose that looks like this. Um, there's a lot of structure that's happening even though my structure right now is um, I just kind of got like a top I got the ball I got a little bit of the wounds of my nostrils I haven't really gone in and got the structure out as much but I got a layout for right now and that's all I really need at this point <coughs> and you just want to make sure even with the eyes you're getting in as you can see a little bit of that lid a little bit uh, the top lid for the bottom lid, uh, a little bit of the bottom for that top lid, all of that is there, that structure is there, so it's very, very important to do that. Um, I have a little bit of a lid that I just realized that I did not draw in, in this area, <laughs> but it's there. Um, but you want to make sure all of those things are there. So this drawing has a lot more to go um, and a lot more linear structure to go. But I at least want to get a start, a start demo for my students so they know what to do or have an idea of how to start or at least see how I start. Um, so it's kind of important for uh, them to see that. So hopefully this helps just a bit. Um, but I'm definitely uh, am going to come back in and um and get this drawn just a little bit more where i want it to be and need to be um that way i can start my light and shade so you will see a little bit more structure on it the next time you see uh this drawing but at least i got an idea of how to start where to put placements um and getting things close to what i'm actually seeing so hopefully this helped you guys once again this video is for my TCU student drawing one, they're doing their final project, which is actually a self-portrait or a portrait of somebody else from um, a photo ref. So you kind of get an idea of how I started from a photo ref. Hope this is easy and it's helpful for my students and they kind of get an idea of what to do. But I would definitely uh, see you guys in the next video and just thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing and I will see you guys in part two portrait uh photo ref drawing <laughs> have a nice night you guys bye